Saturday was beautiful. I, I had a game and it was snowing. Yesterday was not fun. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise having a game. Well, also, like, I, I got several emails saying, do we have class on Monday? Because it is a holiday in Massachusetts today. I mean, but wheat doesn't... It's Patriot's Day, yeah. All right, so we're, we're going to get started. Um, I'm excited. So one of the things that's fun about business fundamentals is that you know we're trying to teach you. Can I have one. Um, trying to teach the basics of all aspects of business. Um, and what's fun is I like bringing in people that I don't necessarily know the topic as well as I'd like. Um, this is my friend Pat Gallagher. He's been doing sales for 30 years. Yep, close to 30 years. So 30 years, um, and I thought he'd give a good overview of sales and what it means to a business um, and I'll let you take it from there okay the class is yours have at them all right great <laughs> all right so I'm Patrick Gallagher you don't call me Mr. Gallagher just call me Patrick okay <laughs> Mr. Gallagher is my dad um, so what I want to do is first I want to start off with say thank you Mr. Chapman or Professor Chapman for having me today um, I know I'm in CC, so it's hard to call him Professor Chapman. Um, but I want to thank you guys for taking the time to come here today on Patriots Day. Um, so, by show of hands, who's had a job before? Okay. Who's actually sold something before? Anybody ever taken an order for something? Who's worked in food service? Food service? Okay. So I know there's some lacrosse players in the room. Are they in here this morning? He's not here. He's not here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other athletes in the room? Okay. What, what sport? Right. Track and field. Okay. 
Um, you ever worked in a sports store? Okay. All right, so what, what was your job? Uh, commercial fish. Commercial fishing? Yeah. All right, great. Terrific. What's your job? Uh, it's in a state park. State park, okay. Do you take registration for people to come in? Yeah. All right. Your job? I'm a lifeguard. Lifeguard, great. Your job? I'm in an office. In an office, okay. Your job? I did market research. Market research, okay. So, no salespeople in the room yet. We're going to change that. Why do you think you want to get into sales? Anybody venture a guess? Yes? Because there's definitely value being able to pitch your product if you're running a business. That is absolutely correct. Thank you very much. And I didn't plant that answer. That's perfect. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so we know that some people have taken some orders, maybe. We know that everybody's had a job, dealt with the public, right? You did commercial fishing. Who did your boat sell the fish to? Uh, like basically, there's like a middleman who would process the fish and then they would distribute it to like markets in New York and Boston. Terrific. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Connecticut, but I fish off Cape Town. Okay. All right, so you were working within a reseller, you said, opportunity, right? Yeah. So the boat bought fish, sold it to, they brought it to what? Right? There's an auction every morning, Yeah. right? Fish comes in, the fish goes to an auction, people come and buy the fish, where do the fish go? Then we get shipped to markets. Markets or restaurants, right? Who worked in a restaurant? Anybody? Okay, your fish probably came from an auction. If there was fish in that restaurant, that's where it comes from. If you go to Stop and Shop, that's where the fish comes from, right? So that's one part of reselling, a reselling opportunity, reselling business. All right, so, uh, this is, oh, I'm going the wrong way, that's probably, I just can't hand this out to you guys right here, okay? This form, what I want you to do, take out your pens, all right, as we go through this, all right, I'm gonna ask you guys to maybe come up with an idea for your own business, okay, and what you might wanna sell, all right, where your passion is, all right? So this is a great start for maybe a new business coming down the line. You don't have to do it, but what I thought would be interesting for you to do is take some of the things I'm going to give you here over the next, how many minutes do we have, CC? You have till 11.20. All right, great. So over the next 40 minutes, I'm going to try to give you a lot of information. You can use the, the form in front of you to try to come up with an idea for your own business, for something you want to sell, all right? So who am I? So I've been doing sales marketing, entrepreneurship, building companies, selling companies, for the last 27 years. So he was a little bit over, it was not, it's not 30 years, but it's 27 plus years, okay? In my sales career, I've sold more than $60 million of product, okay? So 27, 60 million divided by 27, so what's that come out to about $2.1 million a year, all right, as a salesperson, all right? The reason why I like it is, is because it gives me the opportunity to use my intellect, to use my passion, and to make a lot of money, okay? Salespeople do make a lot of money. And that's a great thing for me. I also enjoy it because it, it really starts my engine every day as a, as a professional. I get up in the morning, I work from home, I work for a company that's out in California. And I, it's a conference company, I'm a part owner of it. So I get up, I'm engaged, I'm ready, okay? And I'm util utilizing my intellect, my passion, technology, everybody has Computers, right? Phones. Okay? That's what those are my tools. I have a computer and I have a phone. And that's what I do every day. Alright. So sales. What is sales? I just gave you the definition. The act of selling something. So I have something, I'm going to sell it to you. So you were you worked on a commercial fishing boat, there was a captain, he went out and he bought the he caught the fish, he turned around and he sold it. He has a business, right? Alright. The other definition of sales is, is the total amount of revenue that a company has. So, CC, have you guys been reviewing that as it relates to businesses? A little bit, yeah. Okay. So, sales is a driver for all revenue, all right? How about marketing? You guys been working on marketing? Okay. Marketing is a driver of revenue, right? We're going to promote a product, and we're going to get people to get interested in it, but then they're going to come and buy it. Sales is the action of actually taking that product and talking to the person and saying, I want you to buy this, all right? So you're a lifeguard. You have, you have equipment that you need, correct? A bathing suit, a flotation device, 
suntan lotion. These are all very important things, right? Okay, so you need to go and buy those products. So what type of suntan lotion are you gonna buy? Okay, it's an indoor pool, so wrong, wrong example. But if you were outside, you would be looking for something that lasts a long time, has the right features, something that is inexpensive, right? Okay, so now I'm selling you on, I have this product, I'm gonna sell you this, this suntan lotion if you have a job outside. Now I'm selling to you, okay? All right, so sales. Sales is number one, I have a product, I'm selling it to you. That's definition number one. Definition number two, I have a company, the total amount of revenue that I develop is sales. All right. Next. Let's talk about the different types of sales. So, first one is B2B, business to business. Someone give me an example of a business to business sale. Anyone? Nobody? How about a B2C, business to consumer? <laughs> What's a business that you buy stuff from? Anyone? Who's got an iPhone? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Who's Apple? Do they have business? What do they sell? They sell technology. What else do they sell? You guys listen to music? Watch movies on iTunes? Right? Okay. Who is Steve Jobs? Come on, somebody that needs to know who Steve Jobs is, right? He's the founder. He's the founder of Apple. Of Apple. Did he create the, the, the first Apple computer? No. <coughs> you know who Woz is? Okay. He created the computer. What did Steve Jobs do? He like sold off. There you go. He was a sales guy. All right. He took Woz's technology and he sold it. All right, but you all are buying from a business. Who has bought a, or rented a movie, or downloaded music from Apple in the last week? Raise your hand. Okay, okay, all right. You were just involved in the exchange from business to consumer. Anybody been to Best Buy lately? Okay, anybody been to a restaurant? Okay. Anybody buy a book? What's that? <laughs> well, you bought a book, but it's on your iPad, right? You still bought it, right? Or you're renting it, right? Okay, these are all B2C. How about B2B? This gentleman in the front works for a commercial fishing boat. That is a B2B. A business sells to another business. His boat is not selling directly to consumers, are they? Maybe they do occasionally, but no, right? Is it lobster? Uh, striped bass and chicken. Okay. So, he's selling directly to another business who then turns around and sells it to the consumer. So, has anybody been to Stop and Shop lately? Okay. What is Stop and Shop? Is it a business? Okay, so B to B to C. All right, so let's talk about B to B. So. B2B is selling from one business to another business, either indirectly or directly, okay? So that's number one. So I'm gonna give you an example of a B2B. Verizon, I'm sorry, CPS. They're right here in Norton. They make smart composites. Are you gonna go and buy smart composites from, from CPS? No. Some other company is. How about Verizon Business? Are you gonna buy and rent or get your phone service from, from Verizon Business? from Verizon Business? No. Who are they selling to? Other companies. Okay, so their products are more conditioned or created for corporations, right? So their internet lines are probably a little bit heftier, right? So they're gonna have direct lines, they're gonna give access to companies who need a lot of bandwidth. Do you need that kind of bandwidth? Right? All right. So. Dell EMC. <coughs> is Dell EMC a business to business company? Anybody got a Dell computer in the room? Or at their, okay. Where did you buy it? Online. Online, directly from Dell, right? Okay. So business, that's a B2C, right? But does Dell sell to businesses? Absolutely. 
consumer side of Dell, 20% of their revenue. 80% of their revenue comes from, someone say it, B2B. B2B, right? Okay, so companies look to sell their product directly or indirectly to other businesses. All right, number, number two. Business, business to compute, consumer. So one example would be Verizon. So now, you go to the Verizon store, right? And you rent your phone now, and you get service, <coughs> right? Completely different product set than Verizon business, right? It's gonna be different pricing. It's gonna be a deal, you probably got maybe a, um, a college uh, you know, discount or something, maybe you got a plan, you saw something on, online, or you saw it on, on the TV, or whatever the case may be, or you saw a sign and said, I'm gonna go sign up for Verizon, right? I'm gonna get unlimited, unlimited internet access, or wireless access, right? All right, that's, a, that's one example. Dell EMC, same thing, right? We already talked about it. This young lady bought her, phone, her, her um, computer directly from Dell, right? By the way, who's Michael Dell? Anyone? Did he create the computers? What did he do? He sold them. He bought them from somebody, and then sold them, or bought the pieces, put them together and then sold them. Guys, way back when, probably before you were born, we all had desktops. We didn't have a lot of laptops, okay? And that's how Dell got his start, all right? And now he's worth, I don't know, lots, $3 billion, because he was a sales guy starting out. All right, Dell EMC, food, clothing, entertainment products, sporting goods. Now I think I've got the lacrosse players back in, all right? East Coast Dyes, you know, you guys know who East Coast Dyes are, right? All right? Two guys who played lacrosse in Maryland, one for UMBC, I think, and the other one for University of Maryland. They're brothers, and they started East Coast Dots, right? They started a B to C based on their passion, right? I'm probably gonna use a lot of lacrosse um, examples. My son plays lacrosse, he's gonna be playing in college. Um, so that's what I know a lot about some of this, just because I hear it from my son all the time. But anyway, so business to consumer, all right. Can somebody tell me of somebody who is a business to consumer reseller? I already gave you a couple of examples. Yes, sir. A grocery store, great job. What else? Yes? Clothing stores, right? All right. Can clothing stores also be from a manufacturer directly from a, from a B2C, direct? Like we used to get stuff from corporate and it's sold at a store and it's sold to a store and it's sold to people who come in and sell Okay, right. Terrific. Terrific. Sir? Um, I was going to say like independent shoe dealers, like yep. they buy and sell shoes. Okay. That's a reseller, right? Yeah. Okay, so they're going out, they're buying them, they're adding on what to it? Um, <laughs> they just doing it because they it. like to do it, but what are they going to add on to the price a of premium. that? A premium, right? And particularly as it relates to sneakers, right? Yeah. If you want to get something new, something that's uh, limited edition, all those different things, so you're going to add on a premium, you're going to turn around, you're going to resell it, right? So B2C, reseller. Okay, how about Best Buy? Is there, are they a B2C reseller? They are, right? They buy TVs, all the technology, they turn around and they sell it to you, all right? They make money on that. Does Apple's, Sanyo, everybody give them a break on the price? Uh, they sell it for like wholesale prices. Wholesale, thank you, sir. Okay, so if I'm going to go to you and you have a bunch of TVs and I have access to a marketplace, and I'm going to say to you, listen, you're charging $1,000 for your TVs, right? I can sell 1,000 of your TVs. And you're going to say, great, I'm going to sell it to you for $1,000. I'm going to give you 1,000 TVs for $1,000. I'm going to say, why would I do that? I have access to the marketplace. You don't. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say, I'll sell them, but you have to sell them to me for $800. Then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to sell them for 1000 What am I going to make on each TV? 200 200 200 bucks, right? There's my business. B2C reseller. All right. B2B reseller. Why do companies use resellers? Why do companies, why are you, sir, selling me TVs, right? Because I have the market. What's another reason why you might want to have me sell your TVs, sir? Because I can sell them to you for 
you save money because you don't have to worry about having employees or store locations. Perfect. What's another reason? Who's going to install it? Right? Who's going to fix it if, that, if something happens to it, right? <clears throat> right? So a lot of companies will use resellers to help them sell, but also customer service, right? And time with the customer, all right? Do you want to deal with, I'm not really sure if I want a 32 inch or I want a 72 inch. Do you want to spend your time worrying about that? Too busy making the TVs. Exactly. Great job, all right? So, CDW. All right, they sell into multiple markets, into business, into education, into government. What they do is they take all the technologies that are out there. Name some additional technology companies other than Dell EMC. Anybody know? IBM. IBM, great. What else? How about software companies? Anybody ever use Salesforce.com? Anybody ever use Excel or spreadsheets or Word or all those different things? Right? Okay. So, CDW has access to a lot of different customers. They have access to customers in education. They have access to customers in government. They have access to customers in business. All right? So what they do is they take the products from the manufacturer, they resell them, they offer support, they help them build the systems. All right? Does Dell EMC want to deal with, I don't know, Wheaton College in the installation of a whole bunch of servers? Not at all. They want, to, they want to sell the servers to Wheaton. Now, Wheaton's got the servers. Now, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm an IT guy. Yeah, the servers are important. Yeah, I guess I can go buy a book, dummies for, for servers, right? But now, what do I do? Well, now, instead of doing it and buying it direct myself, I'm going to go to CDW. And CDW already has a plan put together. They say, hey, Pat, I understand that you're trying to put in a bunch of new servers. Here's a plan on how to do it. This is what you buy, we'll install it for you, and you don't need to worry about it. And your internet access, or your Wi-Fi access speed is gonna triple. And what is that gonna make everybody happy, right? All right? So now I go to CDW to do that. All right, B2C distributor. Anybody ever, their family ever redo their kitchen or their bathroom? Okay, ever heard of FW Web? Okay, ever heard of Lowe's? Okay, so there are B2C distributors, an FW Web, a Lowe's, whatever the case may be. If your parents or even you in the future want to redo your bathroom or build a house or whatever the case may be, okay, it's very limited to the types of products that you can buy yourself. Again, why do companies who make toilets who make faucets, all those things, why do they don't want why don't they want to sell direct? They don't want to deal with the customers. Exactly. Right? There are experts who are in design centers who will help you take that faucet and take that toilet and take that tub and put it into a design, hand it off to a builder or to a remodeler, and they will go and build it for you. Right? Okay? So these, Kohler does not want to talk to you. Right? It's just not worth their effort as it relates to their business models. Okay, so that's B2C. So let's talk about direct B2C. I have a bunch of them right here. We already talked about Apple. But what's, what's interesting about Apple? They, also, they sell direct, but what else do they do? Anybody ever been to the Apple store and the Genius Bar? Okay, so they sell direct. They have stores, right? Can you also buy Apple products in Best Buy? Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. So you can see these definitions aren't all perfectly set, all right? They change based on the business model and the needs of the consumer. That's what's most important. Why did Apple put their products in Best Buy? Because if you don't have an Apple store, you buy it that way. People can go to Best Buy and you make more money. Exactly. How about Bose? Have you ever been to a Bose store? Okay, great. By the way, keep going. My wife works there, so I retired. So I'm going to buy stuff there, okay? So, how can you buy Bose speakers or headphones? Anybody got Bose headphones? You have really crappy headphones on, just to let you know. What? <laughs> Sony's. I'm only kidding you. Um, they're not Bose headphones. Um, so, has anybody ever bought uh, Bose headphones or Bose speakers? 
right? Okay, so where did you find them? Best Buy, okay? So there's, again, Best Buy, there's Bose stores, and you can buy them online. But here's an interesting thing about Bose, right? They have Bose stores. Do they care about how much they sell out of their stores? What would you think? Not really. To some degree. They, you would think, yeah, but they don't. You know what the stores are for? Support. Experience. Okay? So, things like Bose, or companies like Bose and Apple, it's about the experience as well. They want you to enjoy or experience the speakers. They want you to experience the headphones. They want to control the environment. Yes, are they still in Best Buy? You, you bought yours in Best Buy, right? But they're right next to a whole bunch of other speakers and a whole bunch of other headphones. So they want to control your experience. That's what Apple is doing with their Apple stores as well and why they've started to increase the number of stores. They want to control the experience. But here's the thing. Are the prices at Bose the same, I mean at Best Buy for Bose, as they are at the store and online? Is it for Apple? Yes, it is. They control their pricing across all of those areas. So if you want to go and buy a computer, a Mac, it's the same price at an Apple store as it is at a Best Buy store. Okay? They're controlling their whole sales environment. They're getting you and talking to you and showing you the product and they're selling it to you and they're not discounting, discounting themselves and eating away at their profit. Okay? It's the same thing for Bose. All right. So this has been the shift. So 30 years ago, before you guys were alive, retail is where it's at, right? You went out and bought, we didn't have the web. Up until 1999, 2000, the web really wasn't a place that you bought anything, okay? So before that, you went to a store or you used a catalog, all right? If you can believe that. Sears, which you guys probably don't even know what Sears is, but Sears was the original catalog company, all right? So, then the internet came, and now we can sell directly to people whenever they need it, all right? And so what started happening? What happened to Kmart? What happened to Sears? What happened to some of these big box retailers? They lost business. They lost business or they've gone out of business, right? Now what's starting to happen? Amazon. Amazon killed them. But now what's happening is, is that what did I just tell you that Bose and Apple and other manufacturers are starting to do? They're creating experiences for customers. They're creating experiences for customers. So what's happening? It's snapping back, right? Amazon is great, right? But can you touch and feel it? I just bought three things on Amazon this weekend. I go into that thinking I'm probably going to return one of those items. Right? You guys do the same thing, right? It's like, oh, I think that's what I want. Right? I look at the reviews. Somebody says it's a great thing, but I'm going to get it. The griddle went this weekend. Right? Just making pancakes, the griddle went. Threw it out. We've had it for like 15 years. Right? This is like a $35 item. Right? So I throw it out. I go online, I do it, I get it, I buy it, and then I realize I'm probably, I can show it to my wife. Right? So, not a good thing to do. Right? <laughs> Never. My wife is a terrific lady, but you always got to show your wife. I didn't show it. So, I'm going to get it. Mr. Chapman knows what I'm talking about. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to show it to her, and she's going to go, yeah, good. Or she's going to say, mm. so I'm going to have to send it back. But if we went to a store, we could look at it together, right? And see, is this the right thing, or whatever the case may be. So there are positives and negatives of everything that you're doing. All right, let's get to sales. First tenet of sales. If every company is concerned with sales, right, that means that every company is sales driven. Correct? Everybody with me on that? If you don't have sales, what happens? You don't have revenue. If you don't have revenue, what happens? You go out of business. You go out of business. Okay? So number one thing. All right. Second, you gotta create a product that someone's gonna buy. Okay, so I gave you this sheet. Alright? And on the front of it, I've asked you where are your areas of expertise is. Okay? Sir, what's your area of expertise? What's your passion? What do you like to do? Ultimate. He just backed up. Like, I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> Ultimate Frisbee. Ultimate Frisbee. Awesome. How about you? Um, shoes, soccer. Terrific. How about you, sir? Soccer. Soccer. Lacrosse. Guys. Lacrosse. 
Swimmer. Swimmer. Lacrosse. Okay. Anybody else? What's your passion? Swimmer. Okay. What's your passion? Food. Excellent. What's your passion? Dance. Okay. So that's your area of expertise or your passion and what you know a lot about. Okay. So that's the first line on your form. What do you know a lot about? All right. That's where the passion comes from. If you're going to try to start a business, I'm not saying you should. But I'm saying if you were, you should pick something that you're excited about, that you know about, right? That you love, right? So, if you know about it, you know you're a swimmer. So, I'm sure there's the equipment that you need that you know that's a piece of crap and that's really good, right? I know for a fact, as it relates to lacrosse, my son, I have, I don't know, at this point, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 50 lacrosse sticks and heads in my house. I'm not sure why you can't resell them, but we just have them, right? And the, he's, yeah, he's laughing back there because I'm sure his parents have the same thing in their house, right? But there are certain things, certain heads, and certain, as it relates to the sticks or whatever, that my son likes. And he knows what he likes and what he doesn't like, right? So ultimate frisbee. Shoes, frisbees, timing devices, scoring, whatever the case may be. Maybe an app to help people to organize, right? Where is the opportunity in your passion? I don't know. What is it? Think about it. What don't you like about what you do? You're a commercial fisherman part-time, right? Yeah. What about commercial fishing? During doing that, have you seen that, hey, I can improve that. I can change that. That's where the business ideas comes from, okay? So, you want to create a product that has features and benefits. Can somebody tell me what a feature is? A specific type of cushioning. Um, so like lunar lawn. Okay, great. Another feature. Anyone? Let's talk about Verizon Wireless. What's a feature of Verizon Wireless? How much data do you have? Okay. Well, that's something you're buying, but what's the, how fast, what, what's, what do they tout as their network? It's a what? 4G network, right? Okay. So that's the feature. What's the benefit of having 4G? Faster speed. Faster speed. So anytime you want to watch Netflix, you can, right? And you can watch Netflix, you can do a multiple different things at the same time, right? So feature is the feature of the product that you're going to turn around and say, you should buy it because of this. And the benefit is, this is what it's going to help you do, right? So cushioning, great cushioning. It stays longer. It doesn't mat down. You can use it for a longer period of time, right? What's the benefit then? Um, you have less wear on your knees, um, better ankle support, just what's the, what's better the, comfort. Okay, so out of all of that, with some, uh, it's better value, right? Yeah. Right? It's going to last longer. So maybe you're going to charge more. Maybe it's a $200 shoe, but it's going to last longer than a $100 shoe. Right? All right. Here's a key one. Whatever you sell a product for needs to be more than what? It's right on the right, right up there. How much it costs? Cost it costs, right? What are costs? Can somebody tell me the different costs that are associated with any product? Manufacturing. Manufacturing. What else? Transportation. Transportation. What else? I need some labor. Labor. Terrific people. What else? From over this side? Design. Design. Great. Okay. How about the salespeople? Because that's a little bit different than labor. Right? That's still labor, but it's usually within business. It's called cost of sales. All right? I'm a sales guy, right? Do I do it just because I want to do it? What did I tell you why I got involved in sales? To do what? Make money. Make money. Right? How do you make money as a salesperson? Anybody know? You sell film. What? Commission. Somebody said commission over here. Terrific. So I get a salary and then I get commission. Right? So that commission is the cost of sales. Alright? So I sell, I go out and I sell 200 pairs of your sneakers. And you're going to give me 10 bucks a pair for every sneaker I sell. That's my commission. Got it? So, cost, sell the product at a market price. What's market price mean? The amount that's being sold to consumers. To do what? Make profit. To make, well, not to make profit. Revenue. Nope. If I have, I have an iPhone, the new iPhone 10, right, X, right? 
and I'm going to charge you $1,500 for it. It's got all these features and benefits, right? Mm -hmm. But I, you could go out and buy an iPhone 8 that came out like six months before, right? And you can buy that for $700. Is the $1,500 at a market price? What are you more likely going to buy? $800. Right. So is $1,500 at a market price? No. Why? It's more expensive. It's more expensive. Market price is what the market will bear that people will pay for your product. You may think it's worth $1,500, but if you can't get anybody to buy it at $1,500, it's not a market price. This gentleman over here works on a boat. There's a market price every day for that fish. And the market is set by what? How much is caught? Right, from an auction. All right? So every day the market price is set. Market price for consumer items, like we're talking about computers, technology, shoes, all that kind of stuff, is, is a wider, is usually set by a multitude of factors, right? How hot is it? Did it just come out? What's the new thing, right? Is it a limited edition, right? You know, the interesting thing as a side note, think about all the changes that have happened between an iPhone 5 and an iPhone 10. Really, at the end of the day, the technology hasn't changed much. What's changed? I told you what features and benefits were. The, like, the visual design and like, the lightness of it. The lightness of it, but, so a feature. Um, bigger screen. Those are all features. Has the technology really changed that much? No. No. Okay, so Apple gets you to buy new phones, or not? you, but a lot of people buy new phones based on features that they're adding all the time. Right? That's the importance of features. But getting back to market price, you must find a market price that is higher than your profit. If you can't, then what do you do? Lower your costs. Lower your costs or? Lower the price. Or? Lay off people. Or? Go out of business. Right? Or don't sell. Right? Or redesign. This gentleman brought up about what about design? You go back to the drawing board. You ever heard that phrase? Let's go back to the drawing board. Okay? Do you know where that phrase came from? Um, Do you know who Henry Ford is? Yeah. Okay. So Henry Ford's goal was to make a cheap automobile. And his designers kept bringing back to him, here, this is how much it's going to cost to make a automobile. And he kept saying, go back to the drawing boards. I want it cheaper. So that everybody could have a car. All right? All right. Fourth and most important part of sales. So this is, sales reps are not order takers, okay? Somebody who's at a Best Buy or at a supermarket and you walk up and you say, I wanna buy this. And they say, okay, give me your money. You're done, that's not a sale. I mean, it's a sale by the fact of the action of buyer to seller. But it's not sales. Real sales is, you know what? I need to get a dongle. This actually happened to me. I had to do it so I could use my computer here. I had to get a dongle for this computer that would connect. So I walk in the Best Buy and I said, I need a dongle for my Dell computer. And the guy said, well, tell me what your model is. I told him what the model is. He said, well, here are your two choices. You could buy this one, it has these features, or you can buy this one and it has these features. This one has just as many features and benefits, but it's $10 less expensive. Did he sell me? Yeah. yeah. He gave me the information I was looking for. He told me what I should buy, and I bought it. And for $29.95, I have a dong. Okay? So that's the definition of real sales. You're taking somebody, a customer, from interest to purchase. All right. So we're running out of time, so I'm going to kind of speed this up a little bit. Real sales is not just about the exchange of goods and services, and this is not going to work because I didn't connect to the internet, but this would be a scene from The Boiler Room. Has anybody ever seen the movie The Boiler Room? Okay, watch the movie The Boiler Room. It's actually a pretty good movie. Um, Giovanni Ribisi's in it, um, Ben Affleck, um, Scott Kahn, all young guys. It's all about sales. Okay, And what this video would have been showing you if it worked was Giovanni um, as his character in his kitchen, he gets a phone call from a telemarketer. And this telemarketer has been calling him every weekend saying you should buy the New York Post. Okay? 
And he's about to hang up. He says, listen, you call me every weekend, and you don't tell me why I need to buy this. And my point is this, is that real sales is about telling somebody, engaging with the prospect, and telling them why they need to buy something. Okay? So that was quick. Anybody tell me what marketing of a product is? If I gave you the definition now of what sales is, what's marketing? It's so you're spreading awareness of your product. Terrific. All right? How do you do that? Anyone? I haven't heard from you, sir. How would you spread the awareness of a product? Mm, just through like social media and stuff like that. Terrific. What else? Ads. Ads? Ads on what? TV. TV? What else? Posters. Posters? How about web ads? You guys ever heard of retargeting? Web ads? You know what that is? Okay, you visit a website and it's got everything to do about soccer, right? <laughs> then you go to another website. Did you ever notice that sometimes on the search engine, a banner ad pops up about soccer equipment. Yep. That's called retargeting. It's a little creepy, but it's how people market. So you're promoting your product to, to generate interest. That interest becomes leads. You take those leads and you turn them into sales. Okay. So we're going to keep going. We already talked about benefits. We already talked about features. So once I know what I'm going to sell, I now need to know who I'm going to sell it to. For B to C, business to consumer, what age group? Male or female? What's the household income? Okay, these are all key and important issues as a salesperson that I need to know if I'm selling B to C. If I'm selling B to B, I need to know what industry, what's the title of the person I need to sell within the organization who has the responsibility to buy, right? Because I'm not just going to call up and, and, and communicate and talk to the, the receptionist, right? Do they have the experience of sign a multi-million dollar check for me? No. i got to find the right person within the organization. Okay? So, you're going to create a product pitch based off of that information that I, just, I said about the, the <coughs> really the, the target profile. Okay? Product pitch is a two to three sentence elevator pitch about your product. If you can say in two to three sentences why Somebody should buy your product, that's a product pitch. So if you're gonna start a business, okay, this is how you have to determine, can you sell your product? Does it have a market price? Right? Does it have good features and benefits? And now, can you tell somebody why they need to buy it? When you're on the phone with them, or in a message on an ad, or whatever the case may be, you need a product pitch, right? Right, you need to communicate with somebody of why they need to buy it, okay? Can somebody tell me the reason why you bought your iPhones? Compatibility with A lot of your friends have them. What else? <laughs> I just, uh, an interesting thing about high school and college kids. Um, by overwhelming factor of close to 70% of high school kids and, and um, Android, I mean, um, college <coughs> students, primarily iPhone, over 70%. And then geeks like us, we have, we have Android, or at least I do. Not, not Mr. Chapman. Um, so, you've got the leads, you've got your product pitch, now where are you going to get your leads? You're promoting yourself, you're marketing yourself. You can get leads from face-to-face, -face, trade shows, networking, street, right, street hawkers, whatever the case may be, advertising, digital, non-digital, um, website, social media, search, retargeting ads, these are all great way, inexpensive ways to get information. Didn't you say that there was a gentleman in your room that did t-shirts or something? Or no, shoes. Was it shoes? He's not here. Oh, okay. So, these are inexpensive ways, building a website, social media. These are all great ways to get information out about your product. Cold calls. You want to freak out? Take your product pitch, start calling people. Completely cold. You know you got a list from somebody. It's people who have a lot of money. They know, you know that they're interested in your particular product or your product set. Now call them up. Right? That's scary. Right? You think, you think uh, final exams are scary. That's scary. Okay? Because this is what salespeople have to do every day, 20 to 30 times a day. All right? So, cold calls and research lists, cold emails and mails. And mail, I should say, mail, not mails, mail. Right? So, postage. Yeah, we have this thing called the U.S. Postal Service. You can still send stuff to people. Right? All right. Cold calls, cold mail, cold emails. Hey, 
I think you might be interested in this product. Two to three sentences why they, you think they would be done. Give me a call or send me an email back. All right? This is how you generate leads. Okay, you go to trade shows. I produce trade shows and conferences. There's a whole group of people who are particularly interested in a technology or a product or something to that effect, right? And I'm gonna pull up, they're in one place, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna market to them. All right. So, these are all the same things as it relates to, B, to B2B, mail, custom email. And I'm gonna just flip right through this, guys, because we need to get to this. So now, we've collectively, we've created a product, right? We've built a product pitch. We know who we're selling it to, all right? Based on that, I'm now going to start doing sales. I'm going to research the person, this is for B2B. I'm going to research the person within the organization I need to talk to. I'm going to try to contact them. Hopefully I got a lead. So maybe I sent them an email, maybe they saw an ad, and they replied back and said, Pat, tell me about your product. Tell me about your event. And so now I'm going to call them. But before I call them, I'm going to do some research so I know who the heck they are and what they do. So now I'm gonna call them up. I'm gonna have a discussion. I'm gonna follow back up. You know it's all the follow-ups, right? So I'm having a discussion, I'm sending them information, I'm following back up, all right? In my business, I sell sponsorships anywhere from $10,000 to $100,000, right? The average number of conversations per sale is eight and a half conversations, all right? Now, that's a large, right, sale or a large product or a valuable product. That's all gonna change based on the, the price and how in depth the interest is in the product. You think I need to have eight and a half conversations if somebody wants to buy new sneakers? Probably not, right? Okay. So, back up again, sorry. So we go from discussion, then we do a presentation. All right, presentation to negotiation, follow-ups. These are all very, very important things that you need to be doing as it relates to sales. Commitment, contract creation, sale, and then customer service. All right? So, why would you want to get involved in sales? You're going to be able to make money, right? And based on, let me ask you a couple questions. Who in this room is tenacious? Let me see one person raise their hand. Who argues with their parents a lot? Okay? No, not really. I'm not, don't argue. No? Like, no. But you know, the fact that you're arguing with me means you might be a good salesperson. <laughs> okay? That's my point. You have to be tenacious. You have to be argumentative. You have to be able to think on your feet. Has anybody ever lied to their parents? What were you doing last night? Well, I did this, 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 and, and then this, and oh, look over there. I did this, right? Okay. What are you doing right then? You're selling what? Story. You're selling a lie. You're selling a story. Right? Okay. So, you have to have the ability to communicate. Can everybody here write a business letter? Okay? Can everybody here talk? Okay? Can everybody here be argumentative? We already determined that that is possible by most people in the room, particularly you. I want to talk to you after class. <laughs> um, so, agile and nimble. What does that mean? Thinking on your feet. No, I was supposed to thinking. Okay, so I'm on the phone with somebody, and I have my product, right? And I'm telling them why they should buy it, and then they throw me a curve. What should I do then? Should I hang up the phone? Thank you very much. I guess it's not going to work out. Click. Got to adapt. You got to adapt. What would you do? Um, I would try and respond to whatever their curveball was and explain how they could still use our product. Right. So what did I just describe that, that curveball? What is that called? Anybody know? What happens in a courtroom when a lawyer doesn't like what another lawyer is doing? Objection. Okay. Objection. Right? So they throw an objection at you. Uh, your sneakers aren't as cushy as I thought they were. Well, um, if you want optimal support for your feet, um, more cushion isn't necessarily better than having um, a shape that's better than for your foot. You just dealt with an objection. Okay? So, being able to be nimble, to be an agile thinker, right? To be argumentative, but to be able to do research. Everybody's done research, right? Right? You gotta do it pretty much every week in college and in high school, 
All right, you need to know your product and you need to know your potential customer. All right, so you have to be able to present. Who here has never done a presentation? Everybody's done one, right? You stood up in front of the class, like I'm doing right now, right? Okay, so everybody's a advanced user of technology. Computers, Word, Excel, all these different things, right? Software is any software system have the ability to make it through. And a passion and having sales skill. If you have all of these abilities, you have sales skill, okay? It's a great way to get involved in business. So if you come out of school, right? A good way to understand and get your foot in the door as it relates to business, sales is that way. That was my first job out of school, okay? Now, through my career over the last 27 years, I've always sold, but I've also managed and started businesses, right? But how I got my start was getting involved in sales because it gives you a viewpoint of every part of the business, right? Because what did we talk about? We talked about manufacturing, we talked about design, we talked about marketing, right? We talked about human resources, we talked about overall understanding of a product, okay? All of those factors, what do you have? You have an understanding of what? Business. business, right? Is there anything else we missed? You're setting prices, right? You understand what your competitors are up to, right? We're not missing anything. So this is the reason why. Now, I put up some information here. The average median salary for a salesperson with less than five years experience is $60,000 in the United, in the Northeast, okay? That tops out over $120,000 um, and usually the base and commission is like a 50-50 split. So if you want to make $100,000, you're usually looking for a salary of 50 and commission of 50. If you want $50,000, obviously, 25 and 25. All right? So sales is an environment that any intelligent, argumentative, right, the ability to lie to their parents, right, and you can get a job. All right. So now I'm going to open it up for questions. Anybody got any general questions? Because it's 11:20. Anybody? It was that informative. <laughs> yeah, I killed it. All right. Well, thanks very much for the time today, guys. If you have any questions afterwards, please let me know. Thanks for your time. Cool. See you on Wednesday, guys. So you were like, so you were on the I'm not 15 minutes, but. I'm on the side. Tell her, roll. Fuck it. I know you all the I didn't think so. I didn't know my abs. Hey. Soft. Like we had a game against Illinois yesterday. Yeah, I got subbed on from the back, which I'm not good at. I was okay. I was I was okay at left back to be fair because the person who was playing at right wing was like a short girl. Like I was able to nail it.